not quite spring around here but our eggs may say different our chickens may be thinking differently because we have went from absolutely no eggs to right around Thanksgiving our chickens started laying and they've been laying so well um, recently uh, that I have decided to take the venture into water glassing eggs now this may be a brand new to you talk, um, or you may have heard it from other people or maybe some old timers that you might have in your life. Uh, water glassing is not pickling. Pickling is very different. This is just a form of preserving. When you water glass an egg, basically you're taking a fresh egg and you're saving it in that form. You're trying to mimic what you might get from the coop that morning, but be able to go to your pantry and pull one out six months down the road. Um, it's been used for ages and ages, but like so many things, people have just forgotten about this technique. And I'm thrilled to be able to learn and to pass it along to you guys. It's, um, it's exciting to me to be able to find ways of preserving our food in a way that we're not dependent upon um, refrigeration or freezing or, or um, even having to pickle to preserve. This is fresh egg storage, you know, just like that. Like I can go and I can pull eggs out of my, pick, out of my water glassing solution, rinse them off, crack them, make bread. I can go make uh, scrambled eggs. I can put it in a cake, whatever I need to do. They're ready to go as soon as I take one out and wash it off. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, as you can see, I have all of our eggs that has been gathered over the past few days. I have our first jar of water glassed eggs over there and I have some lime and this is just basic lime that you can get from any grocery store. It's pickling lime. There's also a lime that you can get from like Home Depot in a 50 pound bag. And I'm looking into getting some of that because it's a lot cheaper. This was, I think around $3 or a little more. And then you need a container and water. Now, another handy thing that you're gonna need is a scale so you can measure by weight your lime. Because for every quart of water that we use, we're gonna use an ounce of lime. So for my gallon jar, I've only put in three quarts of water and I'm gonna add three ounces of lime and I'm gonna mix that up because as we put in the eggs, of course, the water solution will rise up and we don't wanna overflow. Now. You can do this in larger containers as well. Like you can use a, a bucket or even a larger jar or, um, you know, sometimes you can get those really big um, jars that you might put, you know, kombucha or lemonade or something in for serving that are made out of glass. That would even work. I think I have one of those. I might try that next. Um, but anyways, whatever your vessel, just make sure you're adding one quart of water and one ounce of lime until you get it to where you need. Now you want this to cover up your eggs. You don't want any eggs that are exposed. It wants to be completely submerged in your solution. So I'm gonna mix the water and the lime together and it's gonna be cloudy, but that's gonna be just fine. And then we'll move on from there.
can see just how cloudy this is right now, but that will, it'll all settle. And you may even, like with this one, you may even see some of the lime sediment on the bottom. That's not a big deal either. So don't worry about that. Now for your eggs, <laughs> this time of year, probably I guess any time of year that you've got rain or snow or, or even just uh, messy chickens, you're gonna have some eggs that are not ideal for this method, okay? Now, when you have really grody eggs with, with straw or poop or, you know, gross things on it, you're not gonna use those because you, you don't want that in your solution. And you also do not, red flags here, don't wash these before you make this, before you do this, okay? Because if you didn't know, and then this is a perfect example of an egg I will use. A chicken lays an egg and protects it with what is called a bloom. And it's a natural sealant that goes on the outside of the egg as it passes through and, and is laid. Now, as long as you don't wash that off, it protects the egg for a lot longer than it would if you wash it. If you wash it, the egg becomes um, susceptible to bacteria and air and everything else. If you wash an egg, you want to get it put in the fridge right away. So if I were to wash some of these yucky eggs, I would just put them in a carton and put them in the fridge like right now. But for these that are nice and clean, they're the ones I'm going to use for my water glassing today. Um, most of the time I, I keep most of the eggs out on the counter because I don't wash them. Now, if we, now at this point, we've probably got about six or eight dozen here. Um, I, you know, even with as many eggs as we eat, we're not going to go through that, that many that fast. So by preserving them this way and using them, uh, you know, just on a daily basis, this is gonna help us get through the eggs. And, <laughs> excuse me, I could, um, and I've done this, uh, sometimes I will um, crack about a dozen and put them in the freezer for like quiche or uh, frittatas or just scrambled eggs one day that we might want. And that's good too, but again, I want to, uh, hump on my hair, sorry. Again, I want to, I want to utilize this way of preserving without any refrigeration or uh, freezer or anything else. So I'm going to fill this jar up with as many clean eggs as I have. And I'm thinking this one, and it's settled, you'll see that too. Uh, this one is settled, but I know that I have well over two dozen eggs in here. I think I actually have about 30 eggs in here, close, 20 something, 28, 29, something like that. Um, I, I got sidetracked last time I was doing it. I didn't fully count, but I'll try to remember to count as I'm putting in this one. Uh, but you know, eggs come in different shapes and sizes. We've got, here's a good example. We've got these two. This one's a lot more long and cylindrical, and this one's kind of bulbous and, and it's pretty big. Uh, you may not be able to see by the camera, but it's much larger egg than this one. So, you know, depending on the size of the eggs and uh, the shape, it may fit in there a lot more. Let me see if you can see this. Just by my finger being on there and it being just a slightest bit wet, do you see that discoloration? That's, that light white color is where the bloom has made the color of the egg different. You can see it's already fading just from the warmth and the moisture of my hands um, taking it off. But the egg is a much deeper brown and not so pinkish on, an, on the normal. But the bloom changes the color. So I'm gonna speed up the process. We're gonna add the eggs and then we'll go from there.
So as you can see in the video, that I ended up having to pour off some of this water because even being conservative and only putting in three quarts, uh, I still, the eggs displaced a lot of it and I had to pull off at least three cups of water. Um, so I probably, next time I might do two quarts and then just add two if I need to. But no matter, um, I might actually have room for just one more now that it's kind of settled a little bit. Let's see if I can find another fairly clean egg. Ah, there's a nice one. Yeah, there we go. Also, now, if you get any floaters, that's, you know, a floating egg is not a good egg. So you want to get rid of that one. It's going to be one that's already um, not good. And then now I'm going to add a lid. I'm going to date it. And I'm going to set it in my pantry alongside this one. And anytime I need a fresh egg, um, once the, you know, the chickens slow down, um, I can go and I can pull from one of my jars, give it a rinse, crack it, crack into a separate bowl just in case. Now, that's just a good rule of thumb with any fresh eggs because you just never know. Um, it can be, you, you might have a fluke and have a bad egg, but I'll rinse it, crack it into a separate bowl, and then use it for whatever I might need for that day. Um, learning old skills to help us in modern day homestead is such a treat. Uh, it's one of the things that I'm passionate about and I love and uh, I'm happy to share with you guys. So I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, please leave them and I will I promise to get back to you and um, happy homesteading. Bye-bye.